Hello everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. This is the channel where we talk about comic books. And today, we're gonna do superheroes. That's right, we're gonna do Suicide Squad Get Joker by our good buddies, Brian Azzarello, Alex Maleev, and Matt Hollingsworth. So, um, this has been recorded before Comic-Con, but it'll be coming out post. So I will have a lot of cool, fun videos regarding that trip and what I got and all that kind of my experiences and hopefully some cool interviews. But now uh, let's kind of talk about this Black Label book. Here's the book without the bookshelf. Black Label is basically their, like we'll call it the rated R version of the DCU. Uh, it is more of a prestige format. It's a little higher price point. It is uh, kind of takes I think it's kind of like an Elseworlds, but maybe not. I think there are kind of more Elseworlds stories, which I really wish they had that. I, I just thought Elseworlds was so freaking cool. I also saw Vertigo was cool too, so they got rid of that. Um, but yeah, Black Label, the rated R version of the heroes. You know, a lot of Batman books are in the Black Label. They're fancier, they're more expensive. And Brian Azzarello, I've been following him since freaking 100 Bullets. And Alex Maleev, I've been following him since Daredevil with Brian Michael Bendis. So I'm a fan of both these guys. And I thought, you know what? Let's pick it up because these guys, I think, are top, top tier artists and, and creators and writers. And so let's just uh, take a look at this book. Let's do it. Okay, everybody, I'm excited again to talk to you about Alex Maleev and Brian Azzarello. I met Brian Azzarello at Comic-Con many years ago when he was promoting with Eduardo Rizzo, um, 100 Bullets, when that first came out. I loved it. He loved that series. Got to chat with him. He's from Chicago, kind of an interesting fella, cool guy, I assume, uh, married to Jill Thompson, another great uh, comic book creator. Alex Maleev, Brooklyn, uh, New York guy. I met him too at Rose City in uh, Portland. Nice guy. Uh, gave me some advice on some 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 uh, art stuff. So that was nice, nice fella. So uh, I n know them very, very tangentially. Basically, I just met them once or twice. Uh, let's talk about. And sorry, uh, Matt Hollingsworth. Don't know him. Haven't met him, but his stuff is great here. Uh, let's just, and Jared too, Fletcher, gotta say this. Um, this is a fun story. It, it's basically, you know, the idea is, um, Red Hood, Jason Todd, is hired by Amanda Waller for Suicide Squad to take out the Joker and potentially if there's any kind of problem with that, then they get taken out, right? So there's like a, another layer of team that will then take them out, right? And he deals with the fact that he's was dead, now he's alive, and he's going to kill the person that took him out, right? Um, I mean, stuff like this, just, I guess we'll start with the first page because there's so much here. Um, one of the things that really drew my attention to Alex Maleev's work is the texture, is the photo reference stuff. When he first came out with the stuff with Daredevil, I remember I was on a message board with the Brian, the uh, Brian Michael Bendez message board, and there were some people who wanted to know his technique. They were like, you know, tell us how you did this, and I remember him being kind of secretive about it. He did not want to share how he made these these images and I thought that was kind of funny and but uh, he was you know protecting his brand and, and his style and of course now we could probably dissect it a little bit easier than back then but um, when you use some uh, photo referenced work with uh, you know some uh, by is it by bi binary binaryation it's it's where you can take away lines and you kind of like binaryize the artwork uh there's a there's a couple filters features in effects in photoshop and in manga studio 
clip art studio that you can kind of do which gives you this effect and then of course he's done newer stuff right but it's very heavily textured it's got some really fun rough like feel to it which is kind of his style signature and i really love it i really do um and he's just got this nice you know construction line shape based kind of art which i like which guys like you know, Michael Lark does too. And, uh, you know, Jean-Paul Leon, of course, was a brilliant at it. And, and that even goes back to like, you know, you could trace that back to like Alex Toth, that kind of stuff, which you guys know I love. So uh, that's kind of like, so this is a great page. I, I do love it when he's got some really nice backgrounds here, which is some cool textures and that kind of fades out. And then he's got the figures here. Um, so just really great stuff this is a just again classic really nice just basic kind of shape work right and not putting a lot of lines not a lot of hatching and cross hatching just like basic shape stuff and then he'll put a lot of texture and kind of like flavor but it's a great pose the head tilted down it's just it works really well positions of the legs and notice he's actually robin's in between his legs which also is kind of a Maybe a sign of dominance, perhaps. Again, really good stuff. So we're kind of going through his history, you know, catching everybody up on who Jason Todd is. Great. I like the um, uh, silhouettes, silhouette stuff. Coloring is fine. Coloring works perfect for this. He's got some interesting brushes here. He's, uh, when I say brushes, I mean digital. I'm assuming digital brushes. But they could, I think it's digital uh, here, which is kind of a kind of interesting little like almost dry brush look maybe. That's nice. He's in prison. You know, Amanda Waller gets him out. Oh, here we go. This is a nice scene. A little bit of repertoire of these two chatting it up. Uh, and this is kind of nice little... Um, the shadows of the bars, although logically some of it doesn't make sense, but it's it's stylized really well and it's it's cool. There just there would be no bars that would fit just like that with the lighting, but it's okay. It's cool. Also because it's like Task Force X, it makes sense, right? That it's on her clothes and stuff, so that makes sense for for her to have that. Um, can they kind of go back and forth? What should I do? Uh, you know, you're gonna kill the man that killed you, and that's the that's the goal. We're gonna kill Joker. Right. Joker is a uh, what do you call it? A terror, like a national terrorist or a homeland terrorist. We're going to take him out and you're going to do it. Who are you going to bring? Well, you're going to bring in these guys. And so I love nine pound grids, although this isn't that. But <laughs> I love these kind of grid work. Oh, here's where she's talking about the people we're going to bring in. Some of these heroes, we villain heroes slash villains characters we know. Some of them we don't. Like Firefly, of course, we know. But then I've never heard of Meow Meow. This is a Japanese chick. And then and then we get Harley. Harlequin's coming. And this is like, a, you know, Margot Robbie Harlequin. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. And we'll see how that plays out. They put this little serum in his neck. That's basically like a kill switch. So if he acts up, goes stray, bing, bing, she takes him out, right? So they're all have this like fail safe. I think they always had it. I think Suicide Squad always had some sort of a thing like that. I could be wrong. Um, but that's going to come into play in a bit because our friend is going to get that. That's cool. I like that. This is a great book. It's actually it retails for I think around thirty, which is a little pricey from for me. What is it? Oh, it retails for twenty five, but you can get this cheaper. You can buy it for maybe twenty, maybe even maybe even half off, like fifteen or something like that. I would say at that price, it's probably good for it. I wouldn't pay full price. It's a little, it's a little light for that. Something interesting. They, they use a little. Uh, Glowy effects in Photoshop. Mm, not a huge fan, but it's fine for headlights. I like this. I like the darks here. They meet the Toy Man. Who's this? They give this like Toy Man as like some kind of um, pederast or something. 
I don't know about the toy man enough to know that, but I guess he's got some kind of history with children. And then they go into the club, and there's Joker, we think. Of course it's not going to be the Joker. It's too damn easy. Again, I like this texture. He's using like a uh, charcoal, perhaps, or something like that. Again, I don't know if he's doing all this digitally. He could. The thing about digital now, guys, is the tools are so up there now that you could do this digitally. This here is the kind of stuff that really excites me about comic. This is really utilizing the format of comics. Um, this is what comics can do that no other medium can do, which is the real marriage between words and pictures. Anytime you have this onomatopoeia or sound effects that is married with the art so cool, that's what comics is all about. And I'm going to take back the comment I had about digital. This is not digital because you can see on the panel borders here, if you look closely, you won't be able to see it, but I can see it live. These panel borders are done with a pen, a real pen. They're not as smooth as digital. When you do a digital borders, their digital borders are super clean. And these have little bit tiny imperfections in there. So at least the borders are on paper. I would assume that probably a lot of it is. And then he, he might do the textures digitally. Or he does them on, he doesn't do them digitally, but I, I don't know. I think there's some digital work doing happening in the ink stage. That's not nothing good wrong with that. I do I do both. Um, this is the stuff that I think Maliva is just great for. The building stuff, the, the shadowy, the dark, the that kind of stuff. I really dig. This is nice too. This kind of has a Toth vibe. Yeah, and the choice of putting Joker in this um, you know, Clockwork Orange kind of garb is interesting. Uh, I think it works. I don't think I've seen it before. It makes complete sense. And again, she gets jacked up. Joker just annihilates her pretty bad. I mean, in this case, you think she's dead. But comics. I really like this page. This is nice. It's a nice page. I guess... This is the black label part. There's no sex in this, but I mean, with the black label, I think we're getting this like really violent blood kind of stuff. I haven't read modern superhero stuff, so I don't know what it's like nowadays. Maybe it is kind of more like that, but I think that's what the... There's not a lot of cussing. I mean, there's not that much that's becoming considered like R-rated. Uh, well, well, I can't take that back. There's a little cussing. I love these covers, though. Really cool. I love his paint job when he does that stuff. This was always kind of confusing, this like meeting at the beach. Um, I guess it's like a flashback thing. It, it's just kind of weird because I don't know where it's coming from. It just seems a little surreal. But it turns out Joker has their kill switch. So he's got the little button that can kill them at any moment. That becomes a problem. Now they need to get it from him, and at any moment, he could just start killing them. And that makes them ex an issue, because now, in a way, the, the Suicide Squad could potentially be working for the Joker to carry out things so that they don't die, which then makes them a problem. So now we're going to bring in another Suicide Squad to take the original one out, led by... Uh, Jason Todd. So that then becomes the story where you have Suicide Squad versus the other Suicide Squad all trying to get the Joker who has their kill switch. And at, during this time we have a little bit of characterization with these characters and it's fine. Nothing really like makes me jump out for joy or be amazed. Again, you didn't get that much time. It's a small short story. You can't like dive into much but we have a couple pages here with silver banshee and meow meow and you know they're talking about their lives and how you know she was a prostitute and so we get a little understanding perhaps of her damage everybody's damaged we just kind of learn a little bit more about how i like this effect he's a teleporter and i like the way this little digitized thing it looks really cool 
I'm a fan of that. So I got to put that in. Plastique could blow things up. They try to blow up the, the kill switch. It doesn't work. Now they go to a strip club. Again, strip club, but there's no nudity. It's They're not going there. Um, but they're there at a club. And um, that reminded me of Sin City. This is like... Um, black one thing i the these these lines here i'm curious how he did them because it's very rough the silhouette is kind of a rough and i wonder if he taped that if that is masking tape and that's how he did it but it's not done by a brush or a marker it's it's rough so i don't know what that's about i i kind of noticed that like these are lines done by a marker but that was very rough Kind of noticed that I was kind of curious. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm all about process. Okay, so this was kind of, I guess this is also kind of humiliating where the Joker, since he has the kill switch, they're calling it the boom boom or the whatever, he's making Harlequin dance. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of tame, but, you know, she's having to dance for him. And so uh, she's not naked, but she's dancing in her little skimmies for the Joker on stage, you know, which is, you know, it's kind of, I guess it's just jacked up. But uh, she's got a razor blade and she's going to jack him up, but she doesn't do it enough. She pulled her punch, doesn't kill him. She should have. And all hell breaks loose now. So there's guns of fire in. I do like the teleport guy. He grabs the uh, the boom box. But what happens? Smash. Again, great sound effects. Looks like Toy Man is not who they think it is. So Toy Man is jacking people up. He's not their friend. They take him out. He's a robot. Toy Man himself is a robot. So they don't know what's up. And now... Here's the second set of Suicide Squad coming to take out Jason Todd and the crew. And they've got freaking Deathstroke. They got Dead uh, Deadshot. They got Peacemaker. They got this whole... Freak, and then... Is that Firefly again? Or I don't know what that is. So, now we're doing this. Okay. We don't need to... I think we've shared enough. I don't need to read the whole damn book. Um, I liked it. It was good. I'll give it a, uh, man, story, three out of five, but art makes it four out of five. How about that? Um, I really like the art. This is, this is a guy who I like to kind of study and learn from, um, especially some of the texture stuff that I like and things like that. So there you go. That's it. Thank you for watching. Have a good one. I'm gonna show you the game if you never get your spot like me.